What if I told you the greatest adventure we will ever take in our lifetime is the one inward? I believe when we journey deep into everything we ever feared, we meet our truth and beauty there. I could have never imagined the day I stepped foot on the mountain, her profound message for me and the one I was destined to share with all of you. We get to choose how we see this life, either with the lens of fear or love. And in 2013, I found myself once again at the home of Lama Geshe in Pangboshe, on my way to Chomolungma, goddess mother of the earth. As most would know, Mount Everest. Tradition was that mountaineers stopped by his home for a blessing before ever stepping foot on the mountain. Lama Geshe blessed us with prayers, a kata scarf, a sanghe string, and a card filled with white grains of rice, all meant to be taken up to the summit with us for safekeeping, as we would be with the goddess mother of the earth. The blessing held a special place in my heart, especially because in 2011, the mountain had spared my life. After collapsing with hypoxia, which is a condition where your body does not have enough oxygen to survive, and it could be fatal, at 8,400 meters, leaving me a mere five hours short of the summit, needing to seek safety at lower elevations. Inside the card was a profound message, and it read, you yourself are your own refuge. No one else can be your refuge. If you truly tame your mind, you can attain the highest realization of the Buddha. There it was, a message so clear, and yet one that would take me years to fully understand and put into practice. On the mountain, I knew how to be my own refuge. After all, no one could climb the mountain for me. And yet to apply this lesson to everyday life was something I had not yet learned to master. Almost two months later, I found myself humbly standing on top of the world with the goddess mother of the earth, surviving yet another episode of hypoxia at 8,400 meters. Wow. Focusing, wow. Thank you. Woo. Woo. Focusing on each breath and each step, those micro moments of presence, it was just me and her. We were one, the goddess mother. Finding a rhythm of coexistence for survival and success. Each step, a conscious choice to choose love over fear and abandon any doubt. Reaching the summit of Everest requires that one climbs through the night. And so when the sun started to make her appearance, she almost split the sky in half with a radiant orange line, and the whole world below me was revealed. Tears streamed down my face, which turned into droplets of ice. <laughs> overcome by the sheer miracle of existence and creation. Her warmth brought my body back to life and made me feel the entire love of the universe despite its challenges. She was my sign, it's all gonna be okay. And actually, it's all gonna be okay in my life. It's a sunrise that lives in my heart because it's when I was able to witness the whole world come alive within me and all around me and how every single instance leading up to that moment finally made sense. The truth, the joy, the confusing moments, uh, the suffering, the pain, the many wrong turns. On top of the world was a point for reflection and gratitude, for the two-month journey to get there, for all the other mountains I had to climb, the years of dedication, and the women who had inspired me to start climbing in the first place, the women of the Democratic Republic of Congo. The summit was a taste of impermanence, as we cannot stand on the summit forever. Training from not being able to run a mile to scaling the highest peaks, mountains in the world, requires training, no doubt. I developed a sacred practice for climbing mountains, which all started with a prayer, please be kind because I knew the mountains held the power, not me. 
as climbers, we have to bring our whole selves forward to the mountains. Just like in life, we have to bring our whole selves forward to climb the mountains that life presents us with. The training is actually the same. We have to train our mind, move our bodies, and nourish our souls. All practices to become our own refuge, as Lama Geshe encouraged. Today's world conditions us to seek refuge, happiness, joy, security, and everything outside of ourselves. Jobs, relationships, accomplishments, possessions. And when any of these things um, you know, falter, we are left with ourselves. And so four years later, in 2017, I hit one of my many rock bottoms. A stark reminder that Everest, both 2013 and 2017, was not the hardest mountain I'd ever climb in my life, not the most brutal. Those climbs were all simply preparation for life's daily climbs. They were preparing me for life's daily climbs. It took, I took this photo about 3 a.m., about five months prior to my world coming to crash down in San Francisco after which I had to shut my previous company down due to a lack of investor funding. So fun fact, according to Harvard Business Review, companies founded solely by women receive less than 3% of venture capital funding. This was one of many nights where I was working till the wee hours of the morning, and this night an IPA kept me company. Deep down, I knew the hole was too deep. I knew the game was over. And the decision point was the same as Everest in 2011. Turn around for your safety and well-being or keep going and be reckless. I chose to keep going. In closing my startup, with that would go all of my net worth, all of my savings, every last bit, and my health. As I was completely burnt out due to a lack of sleep, and the toll the financial stress had taken on all of my body. As a woman with summits, I also navigated deep, dark valleys, those no one saw. The valley of my burnout took me to places I was ashamed to go, questioning why the mountain had spared me in the first place, only to suffer so deeply once again. There had already been so many other mountains, divorce, depression, heartbreak, discrimination, the massive mountain of inequality that women face and climb every damn day, just to name a few. By 2018, I moved to Amsterdam to rebuild a new life. My runs along the Amstel River became a ritual of sanity and hope amidst despair. Life had stripped me of everything, my health, funds, commu the community of being in a new country, of dreams delayed and ones that have failed, I recognized I was climbing a much more daunting mountain than Everest, myself. The suffering of the loss and derailment of my plans felt unbearable. When I chose to go back to Everest from my second attempt, I committed to choosing love over fear. <laughs> Giving in to fear was easy, especially in those moments where life meets death. And now in this hard moment of life, life was asking me to acknowledge that fear had been my ruler and that for anything to really change, love needed to prevail. One morning, running along the Amstel River just before Christmas, it was the warmth, the sun's warm glow in the midst of a cold Dutch winter that became my sign once again, just as it had nearing the summit of Mount Everest. It was a moment where I finally didn't want her icy waters to swallow me whole. I would actually be okay, but I needed to go in. I needed to go back to Lama Geshe's message and my sacred practices to survive and thrive from this climb. Because finding refuge on and off the mountain demanded that I once again train my mind, focus on what I could control, myself. 
Storms on the mountains quickly make you realize that you cannot control anything external. Everything inside of you is your domain. Meditating, resting, evaluating my belief systems, my self-talk, this endless chatter was all critical. And I had to learn to be my friend again versus an adversary. Move my body. Our bodies are our home. We move not just for exercise, but for our care. To just shift stagnant energy. My mountain climbs began with 30-minute walks, which led to my first mile, which led to the first 10,000-foot 10, peak, and beyond. Progressing along the way. According to the World Health Organization, one in four people do not actually get the required amount of exercise or movement, physical activity. Our bodies need to move for our joy and health. Nourish the soul. We are fueled by love. We are not robots. Self-love, nature RX as I call it, and forgiveness were vital. The self-loathing leading to burnout was soul-crushing. I needed soul food. We all do. Returning to Everest brought accolades. However, a patriarchal lens still clouds mountains. Spending time with them, you realize that mountains need storytellers, not conquerors. Melting glaciers threaten communities and ecosystems and risk the loss of invaluable wisdom impacting all of us. The duality of these climbs made me realize that there are countless individuals that are honorary climbers, scaling metaphorical mountains every day without the praise or applause. The mountains vary for each of us, maybe a divorce, breakups, rocky roads to success, burnouts, inequality, financial hardship, injustice, or silent struggles like grief or addiction. On some of these life climbs, some days getting out of bed can feel like climbing Mount Everest. Despite the setbacks, though, we mustn't lose sight of our vision and our dreams. They are worth climbing for. The right to dream transcends circumstance. It's our universal birthright. And it's something that often can get forgotten or overshadowed by life's challenges. As I rose again and I healed, I was able to look back on that photo from San Francisco and shift my feelings from shame to compassion. It was yet another summit photo. It was creating space for something to break open in me uh, to allow me to see the world with new eyes, those of the heart. Brene Brown says that one day, we will tell our, we, you will tell your story of how you survived, how you've overcome what you're going through now, and it will become part of someone else's survival guide. Yes. I think of the women who inspired my mountain journey, the women of the Democratic Republic of Congo, once deemed the rape capital of the world, and still plagued with the prevalence and the intensity of all forms of sexual violence. Their stories of resilience brought to my attention in 2007 highlighted the injustices faced by women globally, a reality where one in three women will experience gender-based violence in their lifetime, and a statistic that sadly has not changed in my 15 years of activism. Their stories of turning pain into power gave me the hope that maybe that same possibility was available in my own life. The divine feminines, truth, beauty, and wisdom seek wings to fly again. Master the capacity to break, to hurt, to heal, to forgive, to rise again, come together and serve others and nurture and repair what seemingly seems torn apart, echoing Mother Nature's cyclical essence. I never set out to be a mountaineer. My goal was activism, and in 2008, I conceived a project out of my comfort zone, and that was to complete the Explorer Grand Slam and honor these 
honorary climbers whose Stories of resilience ultimately changed the trajectory of my life. The Explorer's Grand Slam consists of scaling the highest peak on each continent and skiing to the last degree of the North and South Pole. That was my chosen path, and it's a feat that has been achieved by less than 20 women worldwide as of today. A feat unlikely for a girl like me from LA who couldn't run a mile when she started. And while the project continues with three expeditions remaining, it's inspired me to climb many more mountains around the world and beyond the scope to share the stories of women and places at risk because both are a life force and the keys to our future. I mastered the art of climbing literal mountains, yet life demanded that I conquer the mountains within. proving far more challenging all along. And all along these adventures, I was being asked to embrace the adventure of living life itself and help others do the same, to climb their own mountains. We all have mountains to climb. Lord knows I have new ones delivered to me daily, <laughs> some bringing me to my knees yet again. Yet I know that when we train our minds, move our bodies, and nourish our souls, we connect with a refuge within, like Lama Geshe shared, and that it can be our portal to the infinite. It can ease our suffering and help us heal and embrace the adventure of life itself. Adventure isn't a one-time affair. It's a daily opportunity. It's a way of living I invite you on this grand adventure, the one inward, the greatest adventure that awaits you in your lifetime, the one that will bring you home. The invitation comes from a woman who climbed to the top of the world and delved into the deepest parts and darkest parts of her soul to find refuge in the only place she ever would, in herself. Thank you.